It's extremely exciting, and yet somewhat terrifying, when you find out that one of your favorite movies of all time was made into a video game. Excellent. Being a huge Wayne's World fan, I was so stoked when I found out that a PC game was made. It combined two of my favorite things, Wayne's World and point-and-click adventure games. However, I regret to inform you that there is absolutely nothing good about the Wayne's World adventure game. And I do mean nothing. Normally I'd have a list of things outlining why you might like the game, but I don't like this game, so here's a list of things that make the game bad. Number one, bad storyline. Number two, poorly designed. Number three, no familiarity. And number four, I hate this game. Yeah, I know it's not a reason, but I really don't like it. Wayne's World for the PC was released in 1993 by Capstone, which means it's gotta be good. This shoddily made intro lays out the storyline for you. Not only does Garth somewhat resemble Dame Edna with those weird cat eye shaped glasses, the storyline they give you for the game is beyond lackluster. The only reason they even designed the intro was so they could use a ton of sound clips from the movie. We're not mental or anything, so don't be afraid. My name is Wayne and this is Garth. Wayne and Garth's public access TV show is being threatened to shut down unless they come up with $50,000. The obvious thing for them to do is to put on a concert. A concert? I'm afraid you've been misinformed. But nah, that's just silly. What you have to do is have a pizza-thon. <laughs> Wayne and Garth put on a pizza-thon? <laughs> yeah, right, as if. Did anybody really think about the logistics of what a pizza-thon is? Do people order pizza? Do people pay for pizza? What if you live hours away? How do you get your pizza? You are given a huge list of things you need to find or to do to help you with the pizza-thon. You need ingredients, people to play a concert for you, a way to broadcast it, entertainment, possibly a magic show, you know, the familiar things involved with the pizza-thon. The first thing to do, of course, is buy a scratch ticket, because you'll actually win a free candy bar. I just want to say that that is the biggest scratch ticket I have ever seen. From there, you give the candy bar to someone else, who gives you something to give to someone else, who gives you something to give to someone else, and so on, and so on, and so on. The puzzles vary from pretty easy and logical to what the crap did I just do? I made a seat out of a hockey stick? I made a mouse trap out of a chain, a drumstick, and a miniature castle model. I drained an entire fountain with my suck cut. It certainly does suck. The menu bar is insanely confusing. You can switch to Garth, but I swear he's only useful for two things in the entire game. There's an extreme close-up option, but I didn't use it a single time in the game. Because the icons look pretty similar, I found myself confusing them. I spent most of the game just using the use icon on everything. Oh hey, you know what's really great about the save options? Nothing! You can't name your file, and it never indicates which file was last saved. Great. This game is fairly short, at least it would be short, if not for two things. The game show segment and the dreaded sewer level. The game show segment, which I don't even remember signing up for in the game, is where you answer questions about hot babes in a Jeopardy style way. You can't lose and it takes absolutely forever to get through it, even if you answer all the questions wrong. Admittedly, I like trivia games, so I may have liked it if it were an actual game. After you manage to find all the inventory items you need, you can start the pizza-thon. It seems to be going well until an anonymous person convinces everyone that Wayne's World is corrupt through spirally hypnotics. The second half of the game is locating the money that the anonymous speaker has stolen from the pizza-thon. Now onto the maze, which takes up at least 30% of the entire game. This is not your average sewer maze where you simply need to find the exit or maybe even one room. Nope, you have to go back and forth, find multiple rooms, including Cassandra because she was kidnapped for some reason. The game takes a ridiculous turn when you run into the Lizard King. Seriously, why is this in the game? Why is there a Lizard King? Why did this game change to include completely fantastical characters? We fear change. The game isn't completely devoid of humor. There were some, but not many, dialogue scenes that happened to get a chuckle out of me, but most of the time, I was just frustrated. It could be because there's only one or two songs played for background music throughout the entire game, and the game is at least two and a half hours long, so it gets a little grating. 
I almost want to say that I enjoyed some of the puzzles. For example, there's a science lab with an insane doctor that had some funny little parts. But the inventory puzzle parts of the game are completely whitewashed by the sewer levels. Out of the two and a half hours of gameplay, an hour and a half was spent in the sewer, aimlessly wandering, hoping that I would find something. It's almost as though the designers decided to give up on coming up with creative inventory puzzles and instead made a sewer level to add more time to the game. Now, some adventure games do have maze puzzles and not all of them are bad. King's Quest VI, for example, has a really eventful catacomb maze. It's fun because it's suspenseful and challenging. This sewer maze is nothing like that. If you can get through the maze, that is the key to beating it. But be warned, it's frustrating and there are four unnecessary levels to the sewer. I should also mention that this game is bugged to hell. There were at least four separate occasions where I found myself in an infinite loop of room settings and the only way to fix it without messing up or losing your progress is to open the options menu, which magically fixes it. One of my biggest grievances about this game is the lack of familiar characters and concepts they should have used. Besides Cassandra, I didn't recognize any of these characters. They were just thrown in to move the game along. The only thing I got a small kick out of is the slight resemblance between Stan Makita's donut shop and the donut shop in the game. Though they don't even call it Stan Makita's, it's just the donut shop on the map. Wayne's basement looks pretty good, but you don't really spend any time there. When you want to create an homage to something that is so beloved by so many people, the last thing you want to do is make it something it's not and add things to a pre-existing world that otherwise wouldn't be there. When I saw the Lizard King I mentioned earlier, I nearly flipped a table. Wayne's World is not about weird, fantastical creatures. The character, obviously added for comedic value, didn't even fulfill its purpose. I believe that adventure games have the ability to be creative, filled with vast worlds and mythological creatures, but when you attempt to make an adventure game out of a pre-existing movie, it's a little different because you're already given a world and characters to work with. I wanted to like this game, but it's such a hot mess. I hate to say it, but this game really didn't deserve a second look. Four unnecessary levels to the sewer? Why? Why are there so sewer many maze. sewer levels? Lizard Why King, the menu better. Worlds. I can save my files. Wait, I don't want to end the review like this. Let's do the super mega happy review ending. I beat the game and I'm proud of myself. And even though the game was bad and probably doesn't deserve a second look, or third look, or fourth look, I was reminded about how much I love Wayne's World. And I think we all learned a little bit more about ourselves. Isn't it great that we're all better people? Fish! Yeah! 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 Yeah!